Hi, I'm Jean Atkinson and welcome to this tutorial on the Marketing Minds Academy where we're just going to take a quick look at the AB split option in MailChimp. So if you go to your campaigns dashboard and click on create campaign, I'm going to do it around emails. There are all these other options at the moment, but most of us will be doing an email campaign and you'll probably find yourself just leaving it and just choosing the regular. We do actually have this one over here, which is A-B testing. Now, A-B testing is about having two variables. You've got variable A and variable B. And these two things could really change how people respond to your email campaign. It could change the number of people that open the email in the first place, right through to the number of people that actually click on that button or click on the link. And this is about being able to test just one thing. If you were to test more than one thing, you wouldn't actually know what had worked and what had made the difference. And this is called A-B split testing. We actually use it a lot in marketing in direct mail campaigns, for example. If we have a thousand recipients, we might send one um, campaign out in a yellow envelope and one campaign out in a white envelope, and you'll split it 500 each. You wouldn't choose who they went to, you just randomly put it out there and you'd actually see if you got more opens with the yellow or the white. And then if actually you're getting quite a lot of people opening the yellow and responding to you, saying they've got it and whatever else, then you would go forward using a yellow envelope. And that's the idea of A-B split testing in marketing. It's just trying to find the best route to get to your customer and the best way in which you can engage them. So first of all, we need to give ourselves a campaign name. Well, I'm just going to call this AB split and click on the begin button. Now we need to select a list that we're going to send this to. So I'll just click on this list here and then you click the next button. Now, these are the four elements it's going to let you change, but you only can select one of them. The reason, as I said before, if you selected more than one, you wouldn't know whether it was the time you sent it or the subject line that you used, for example, that actually made people respond more. Now, subject line, it gives you two or three options. So you can send three different subject lines out, or you can send two different subject lines out. I'm going to stick with the two for now. And what we basically want to do is just click on next. I wouldn't bother with any of the other stuff right now. So now it says great. And you'll notice the difference down here is it gives us two different subject fields instead of just the one. Now, we might be actually trying to find out what words work better for us. So say we have a 30% discount offer until the end of January. You could basically put for the first one, catch our 30% discount um, on web development before end of Jan, just making that up there. What we want to do is change this slightly. So you might want to copy and paste it. You might put um, catch our 30% offer on web development before the end of Jan. Now this is just changing one word. But actually, people sometimes like to hear it as a discount. They like to see it as an offer. So this in itself could be a way of testing your subject line. Do more people open the word, one with the discount word in? Do more people open the one with the offer line in? It could be that you want to personalize one. So you want to have the merge tag in here, but you don't want it in here. So one is personalized and one, if you do it here, isn't. So they say the same thing, but you've put Jean in one of them and no name in the other. And this is about seeing how many, you know, how it actually changes people's perception of opening up your email when they see it in their inbox. So it's about saying, do you want to put, you know, is, is it the, the, the words that are going to help you? Do you want to put emojis in? Because, you know, is that going to make a difference if we do that and then that? And then we have one without an emoji. I mean, this is really trying to kind of get a feel 
for what you think will catch people's eye and what will make them open something. So only you will know what you're trying to achieve with your newsletter or your discount offer or your event. But this is about saying, I want to change one thing within that subject line. And what do I think that's going to be? So if you had an event you were inviting people to, you could say limited places available on our June 10th marketing event. Okay, what you might want to do in the other one, let's have a think, there we go, is it could be, um, actually I'll change it completely. So we're going to do here something completely different and say your exclusive invitation oops, to our June 10th, oh God, come on G. So what we're trying to gauge here is does limited places make people open something or is it the fact that you're exclusively inviting them to something? So again, you're testing that subject line and basically you will put that out there. MailChimp will randomly send it out to 50-50 to your um, recipients and then when it reports back, it will tell you the results from each one of them. So a lot of people use it to actually set up the um, email subject field. But as I've kind of shown you, we do have other options available to us, okay? So it could be the from name that you want to do. So that little bit that comes up in your emails where it tells you who the email's from, is it that you, you personalize it and put a name in? Or is it that you put the Marketing Minds team or um, John MD, or um, Gene Atkinson, you know, whatever it is, do you think that who it comes from would make a difference in how people open that? The content, we'll come on to in a second. The send time is basically what time are you going to send this out? So now we're thinking, I want two or three times I'm going to send this out. One lot's going to go out at eight o'clock in the morning. One lot's going to go out at two o'clock in the afternoon. So again, you might see if those at eight o'clock in the morning that get sent out, you've got more of an open rate than you would do in the afternoon at two o'clock. So this is just saying you've got two options here. Do you want to test which one's going to give you more traction? Is it option A or option B? Is it subject line one, subject line two? And you just kind of keep refining it down. You'll find a subject line that works and you'll roll that out across your marketing material. So if this idea of an exclusive invitation works really well in email, then you might put that out there in terms of direct mail piece, in terms of your Twitter invitation or LinkedIn. So it can go across all of your marketing activity. It doesn't just have to stay within email marketing itself. I love A-B split testing. I try and use it as much as I possibly can and encourage my clients when they're using MailChimp to give it a go. The one that's quite interesting is when you use content. So with content, I just need to go back and um, change it up a bit. So let me just choose um, a new campaign because I'm already halfway through that one. Sometimes you can't quite backtrack on um, MailChimp. Is with the content, come on dude, with the content, you're now going to say, I'm going to change something within the body of the email itself. So the subject line is going to be the same, the time I send it out and the name of the person that it comes from. But I'm actually going to change the content. I'm going to have two combinations, two options of what I do here. So all this now, you're back to one subject line. So I'm just going to put testing in there. And obviously your preview text is a little bit that pops up at the bottom when someone has notifications on, or it's a little bit that comes in the description next to your email. So I'm just going to put testing two in there just so we can move on from it. And your content buttons are here. So what you really want to do is make the content exactly the same in each of them, but change one thing. Now, obviously, I don't want to totally create an email here, but one of the things that people use are the buttons. So on a button, you might have something like buy now, but in the second email, the second um, template that it shows you, you might change that to um, um, order now. 
or you could have something where it's um, sign up for guide. So maybe you've got a user guide available. Yeah, or it might be um, request guide. So this is about saying what, what do you think is going to work best? What are the things that you're going to do to get people to click on that button? What do you need it to say? Um, contact us or is it make an inquiry? Even simple things like that can make a difference. Don't forget you only want to choose one thing within the content ideally that you want to be testing. Alternatively, it could be how you start your email campaigns. So, you know, it could be that you want to add their first name in it and then you've got some content in there, blah, blah, blah. It could be in the second email that you don't want to personalise it. But really what we're looking for are click-throughs. So it could be, for example, that you've decided um, you're going to do your social media accounts. And in one email, you're going to have them at the bottom. But then in the other email, you're going to have them at the top. And do people click on them more at the top or at the bottom? So do you see what I'm saying? You're trying to change one thing really about the content. It could be that um, you put different images in with a click through. You do different call to actions is mainly why people will change content and positioning of articles. So typically it's about where do you place your social media links? You know, what do you call your buttons? Where do you place your call to actions? What do you name your links? And these are actions that we can monitor. If you're just changing text content or images that don't go anywhere, um, you're not really going to be able to see um, results in, in, in um, kind of a true form, to be honest. And that's what that is. It's basically saying, right, OK, well, you've done that. So what are you going to change in the second one? It could be that it's the button, it's the name on the button, it's the location of the button, it's the social media, it's a different image on the top with a link. You kind of get where I'm coming from in terms of A-B split testing. So A-B split testing really is quite useful, OK, whether it's actually changing content across the two or whether it's actually just changing the um, title or the name it's coming from. Definitely try time to start with. That's quite an easy one to start with. You know, have a feel for what day and time you might send it on. You don't want to, you can't do the two, so you can't choose a Tuesday at 9 o'clock and a Wednesday at 3 o'clock because you're changing two parameters there. But, you know, you could do, I'm going to send it Tuesday morning at 8, I'm going to send it Tuesday afternoon at 2, and just see what the open rates are like. Try A-B split testing. It really is quite useful. You're not going to break it. But also think about how you can use it across other marketing activity that you're doing. It's about getting more traction, more people engaging with you. And, you know, why wouldn't you go for the one that's getting more click-throughs than the other one? So definitely try it. Any comments, please put them below. You know that I um, get back to you on them. Um, this is me, Jean Atkinson. Please don't forget to share this channel and please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And don't forget to like the videos just so we can build up um, some credibility within the YouTube community. And um, yes, I will see you for the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.